Sexing Hitler, prologue. I am the Reichsfuhrer, Heinrich Himmler, head of the Gestapo and the SS. I am second only to Adolf Hitler. To my Fuhrer I owe my great success. Together we'll lead our German homeland and dominate Earth with an iron hand. We'll enslave all the world's lesser races, the Negroes, the Slavs, the Poles, and the Jews. Those with weaker minds and darker faces will labor for Germany as we choose. If they refuse to work as they're employed, their entire race will then be destroyed. They'll be taught obedience, diligence, and give unconditional submission to their German masters, whose eminence they must acknowledge their recognition that we have become, despite their vanity, a superior branch of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Himmler orders Brink to build the doll. What's the problem? Syphilis. Syphilis? Syphilis. We're losing more men to the French disease than we are to the French guns. It's threatening to destabilize the occupied territories. The greatest danger in Paris is the widespread and uncontrolled presence of whores, picking up clients in bars, dance halls, and other places. It is our duty to prevent soldiers from risking their health all for the sake of a quick adventure. <laughs> What can uh, we do? <laughs> well, Hitler has proposed that you create an artificial woman that each soldier could carry into combat. Then when they wish to fulfill these desires, when they have those urges, they'll have everything they need to take care of the problem. An uh, artificial woman? She could be made of rubber or some other material. Something inflatable, perhaps, that could be carried in their packs. Then they'll have no need for prostitution. A doll uh, for sex? I am unconcerned about the activities of the regular army. But the SS soldier must not associate with these inferior races. Men of the SS are forbidden from having relations with any woman that has not been approved by the Reich. I will not tolerate any illegitimate offspring with the <coughs> polluted blood of French whores. Oh, oh, of course not. Imagine Hitler's embarrassment. If Germany were to lose the Western Front due to something as pitiful as venereal disease. I place our future in their hands. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> just a soldier in the SS. Every day I risk my life for my homeland on the Eastern Front. Will it even work? I, I, I mean, I suppose it could. It's just a matter of sorting out the correct anatomy. <laughs> but will it matter if she isn't real? Could a man love a statue the same way he does flesh and blood? The only joy I have is with a cheap whore. What do I care about disease? If tomorrow I might die. Is it practical? Is it ethical? Uh, oh, what do I tell my mother when she asks about my work? <laughs> <laughs> is she tall? Is she thin? Is she blonde or brunette? Does she smile? Does she stare? Will she wear underwear? I have my orders. Straight from Himmler's desk. The doctor asked me to love his doll. How could I refuse? Will they do it with a doll? Will she be beautiful? How could this be better than a woman? Do I try it out myself? Will they believe it's real? Oh, whatever. Hey, it's better than being on the front. I can't believe I'm doing this. Will they fall in love? <laughs> I, I want to please my hero, but what if I can't perform? <laughs> <laughs> Eugenics, Francis Galton. 
80 years ago, or about, Charles Darwin figured it out. The origin of the species laid out his genetic thesis. The evolution of the apes gave rise to the human race. Francis Galton, Darwin's cousin, after much research and reason, under Darwin's thoughtful guidance, formulated a new science. The eugenics is the science which deals with all influences that improve the inborn qualities of a race and develop them to the utmost advantage. And civilized societies that seek to protect the underprivileged and the weak are at odds with natural selection, causing a regression towards the mean. Great <laughs> Meat Center. This is Fräulein Schneider. She will be assisting you in this project. Dr. Rink. <laughs> she is an expert in textiles and materials. She was working for Hugo Boss designing SS uniforms. <laughs> Now, she is working for you. Uh, a field coming, Frau Einstein. Dr. Ehring. Now, I'll leave you to your work. Oh. Uh, so, uh, you're an expert in textiles. Yes. And you're an expert in fabrication. Uh, industrial designer, yes. Oh. Well, we seem well suited to the task, then. I agree. <laughs> so, shall we begin? Absolutely. It shouldn't be difficult. It's only a matter of... Well, what um, we need to do is... Uh, it's like any other mechanical device, really. Yes, yes. A mechanical device with a specific purpose. We simply design to its utility. That sounds simple. Uh, uh, perhaps we should start with the uh, obvious issue of the uh, outer... Uh, the exterior covering. Oh. <laughs> well, the exterior covering should replicate as closely as possible the feeling of... Um, uh, um, it, it, it should resemble, uh, uh <laughs> it should be as realistic as possible. Yes, and it, and it needs to be strong. Yes. And, uh, supple? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what material do you recommend? Material? Uh, which material is most lifelike? Oh, well, the material... Uh, the, there are many options, really. We um, we could try a vulcanized rubber covering. That would be very uh, <laughs> durable. Yeah, something uh, pliable yet uh, resilient. Most resilient. Mm -hmm. But of course, rubber supplies are limited right now. Oh yes, yes. We, we must strive to keep the unit cost as as economical as possible. If these are to be uh, well, if these are to be issued to every soldier. Oh yes. Every soldier? Yes, that's uh, that's an incredible amount. Well, maybe we should try some sort of synthetic material, polyvinyl, perhaps. This would be different than rubber. It would be comparable, but perhaps not as durable and not as warm to the touch. <laughs> that's uh, that's certainly something to consider, then, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, the material needs to be uh. <coughs> Inviting? Uh, well, maybe we should consider a material that's more closely associated with femininity. Uh, something the uh, soldiers will find attractive. Yes. Silk, perhaps. Yes. Yes, silk is uh, smooth and um, very smooth. Like a lady's undergarments. <laughs> yes, a, a lady's. Uh, very smooth. But, but difficult to keep clean. Clean? <laughs> oh, clean. Yeah. It won't wear as well as pulp. And, and silk is even harder to obtain than rubber. So we have to use nylon. Oh, but I fear these materials won't hold up well in combat situations. <laughs> no, no, the environment can be extreme. We, mu we must make durability a priority. Elasticity. Leather will have to take a certain amount of use, of 
stretching and bending. It would have to be oil to keep it from drying out and to keep it lubricated. <laughs> <laughs> This may be too much for the field. I agree. This, this assignment, it's, uh, it's overwhelming in scope. There's no obvious place where we should start. The appearance of the creation or the functional aspect, each affects the other. <laughs> what is the Latin word for woman? Uh, femina. Femina. And the, uh, the Latin for doll is pupa. Femina. Uh, pupa femina? Ugh, atrocious. Mm. It's a tongue twister. Oh, uh, uh, Greek for woman is gyna. Gynoid. Gynoid. <laughs> That's what we're making. Good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is a guide. Uh, it has been designed to fit inside your uh, pack, and when you are uh, in need of it, uh, you can inflate it using a pump, or you can, uh, you can blow through this nozzle here in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and what am I supposed to do with it? Uh, it, it is an obvious yeah, we could make the enemy think there's uh, more of us than there really is. No, no, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not its purpose. It, as you can see, it, it uh, approximates the female form. Uh, here. Here. <laughs> 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 yeah, it does, uh, kind of. You are to have relations with the guy. Relations. As a substitute for any prostitutes or other questionable women you might encounter in the field. So, so you want me to fuck it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our, our goal is to prevent the spread of uh, venereal disease, <coughs> to keep the soldiers out of situations that might endanger their lives. Oh, I can assure you that this is most serious research, overseen by Rex Muir, Heinrich Himmler himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure it's all for the greater good of Germany and all, but uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Your role here is to put the gynoid under rigorous testing. <laughs> we need to understand how she fares under regular use, and then we understand the amount of abuse she can withstand to understand how she'll fare in combat conditions. <laughs> I'm also keenly interested in the uh, psychological impact of the gynoids, oh. along with the physical testing. I'm, I'm asking each soldier to report back on their experiences. I, I, I want you to relate whatever imagery or sensations or fantasies it, it, it inspires. So you want me to take your doll as uh, a... Uh, gynoid? Uh, gynoid. Mm. Have my way with it, so to speak, and then... Uh, Report back to you what goes through my mind during the act. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse us, ladies. Once 
was a man from Berlin, giving orders to his chagrin. He was handed a doll and told, go have a ball and come back and confess all your sins. How you do
sleep with French prostitutes, then he must instead use this fabrication. Uh, he's told that it's for his help and yet we inquire about his fantasies. <clears throat> he said it's a war. It's speaking. Is that what it's supposed to be? He takes it for granted. She's merely for pleasure. To escape from the tedium of war. What of your dreams, soldier? My, uh, my, my, my dreams, sir. Yes, your desires, your hopes. My only hope is to survive this war, sir. You have no desire beyond survival. It is, it is futile to wish for anything more. Do you understand why we are fighting this war? No, no, no sir, I am only uh, trying to stay alive. Great. This man is a disgrace. You give him dreams, but all he thinks about is his French whore. I give him a new Germany, but he does not wish to fight for it. His only regard is his own life. He cares for nothing, cares for no one. His life has no value to the right. We cannot win the war with soldiers such as this. We cannot fulfill our supreme destiny with his attitude. This man is self-serving. He can be counted on only to save his own skin, and I fear he will do so no matter what the cost. Even the lives of his fellow Germans, even at the expense of our beloved country. Do you understand the magnitude of the problem before you rank? This is what you must deal with. This is the sort of person your so-called gynoid must inspire, so that his love of the fatherland can be felt in the very marrow of his bones, the beating of his heart, and the deepest core of his sexual passion. <laughs> is that even possible? It is absolutely necessary. Highly correct. <laughs> Eugenics, Madison Grant. The famous conservationist and noted anthropologist, Madison Grant, to make his case, wrote The Passing of the Great Race. This work was archetypal. Hitler claimed it was his Bible. Among the ideas it contained was the sound science that proclaimed the Nordic race superior, all others deemed inferior. A rigid system of selection <laughs> through the elimination of those who are weak and unfit, in other words, social failures, will enable us to rid ourselves of the undesirables who crowd our hospitals, our jails, and our insane asylums. This is a practical, merciful, and inevitable solution to the whole social problem and can be applied to an ever widening circle of social discards. <laughs> Beginning, of course, with the criminal, the diseased, the insane, but expanding gradually to include those types we might call weaklings rather than failures, <laughs> and perhaps, ultimately, to worthless race types. <laughs> Brink and Santa refine the doll.
It's female. Yes. Mm. Um, we know that much already. What else? Uh, it's a, uh, oh, uh, she. It's a she. Uh, she has, mm, she looks like you. <laughs> Me? Well, I, I think of a female, I think of you. You're, you're standing right there. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm no man's fantasy. <laughs> don't say that. It's true. Well, uh, well, I don't believe it. You have, uh, Good qualities. <laughs> We're not talking about me. We're talking about your fantasy. Seam Ripper. I, I don't have one. Yes, you do. It's right there. No, I, I, I meant I don't have a fantasy. Um, what's a seam ripper? Everyone has a fantasy. It's the handle with the pointy top. I don't. <laughs> the thing with the hook, it doesn't interest me. Yes, that's it. <laughs> don't have a fantasy. No, no, I, I find the whole idea absurd. It's not that difficult, really. You just think of a woman you had feelings toward and remember what she was like. Well, there was a woman once. We had a, we had a stimulating conversation. A conversation? Yes, uh, we shared a common interest in the romantic composer, so we got along very well. I love the romantics. You do? Oh, yes. They just move me so I can forget everything else. Very Wagner, barely oh, I I'm partial to Mendelssohn. Chopin's <laughs> Rosemary. I'm sorry. No, uh, don't, don't apologize. It's, it's nice to find someone with a shared interest. Did you find her attractive? Oh, uh, yes. Great. <laughs> Fine. Scissors. Oh. Scissors? <laughs> Her uh, knowledge of the subject was very thorough. Well, no, I, I, I meant her appearance. Her uh, appearance? Would you say that she was pretty? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, not, not pretty. No, no, the, uh, the opposite, uh, really. <laughs> but it wasn't a factor in our relationship. In, in fact, I, uh, I think it helped, actually. Helped? Well, I find women to be a bit uh, intimidating. <laughs> All women? Well, what about me? You. Oh, you're a colleague. It's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, um, glue? Um, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Blue. Oh, uh, Leipzig. <laughs> <laughs> Leipzig. You want to go to Leipzig? Yes. You've never been? No, but I've thought about it. It's only two hours away. Well, I'm a busy man. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you've never left Dresden. No. Why? No reason. Needle. Uh, needle. <laughs> and what would you do in Leipzig? Uh, thread. Uh, thread. Uh, no. <clears throat> the pink. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to visit the uh, Mendelssohn Monument. Oh, well, that's gone. They tore it down a few years ago. Who did? Why? The Fuhrer. M Mendelssohn was a Jew. But he... Well, that is the sort of thing they would do, isn't it? How unfortunate. I'm sorry. <laughs> no matter. Well, you sound like it does matter. Well, they can't tear down his music. We'll always have that. <laughs> Even if it's just right here in my head. <laughs> I had always hoped to visit that uh, monument, though. A fantasy? <laughs> just a thought. Well, thoughts about the things you'd like to do and that you haven't done and what they might be like when you actually do them, those are fantasies. 
That's a fantasy. <laughs> but that's nothing. Yes. Much of the time, it is nothing. <laughs> Female traits. Faceless gynoid would allow the soldiers to imagine whatever woman they uh, wished. No. No. No! Dr. Ring, that is not what we need at all. She must be the perfection that every soldier sees when he closes his eyes and imagines the journey of the future. She must be fantasy made real. What I have seen does not have recognizable features. How can you expect to inspire your soldiers' fantasies if your gynoid doesn't even have a face? <laughs> what kind of face? Lucky for you, I can help. This is my mistress has seen. She is the perfect Aryan ideal of beauty, health, and athleticism. She will serve as the model for your dolls. Although it wouldn't hurt to add a little love here. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, you have explained your mission to me, and I am honored to be chosen for such a vital task. It's my dream to be the mother of a new Germany. My face will be on the mind of every soldier as he envisions the ideal beauty. What I imagine all those strong, handsome. <laughs> German soldiers making love to me. Oh, I get a thrilling tingle deep down. In my soul. <laughs> In order to build a new Germany, we will need many offspring. It will be necessary for a man to have a wife and at least one mistress, provided she is of good German stock. It will become the great task, even outside the marriage bond, for German women and girls of good blood, not in frivolity, but in deep moral earnestness, to become the mothers of children of soldiers going off to war! <laughs> <laughs> Pure 
fostering the good for nothing at the expense of the good is an extreme cruelty. <laughs> there is no greater curse to posterity than that of bequeathing to them an increasing population of <laughs> imbeciles. <laughs> when motherhood is the fruit of a deep yearning and not the result of ignorance or accidents, <laughs> then its children will become the foundation <laughs> of a new race. What is this? 
to pencil. Good. Right. <laughs> now, pretend it's something else. Show me. Show you what? What else it is. It's nothing else. It's a pencil. Pretend. What would you like to pretend it is? Okay. I'll go first. This is not a pencil. It's a hairbrush. <laughs> now you. It's a pencil. I, I don't know. Okay. Why? I just do. It's a pen. Okay? <laughs> no, something different. But that is different. It's clearly a pencil. Choose something completely different from what that is, not another writing appearance. Okay. <clears throat> it's a comb. <laughs> okay? No, no, not okay, not at all. So what is it then? It's an oar. An oar? From a boat. All right, it's an oar. Pretending and dreaming is dangerous. Dreaming is all, all we can do anymore. If, if you don't have your own dreams, then you're just a slave to someone else's dream, to Hitler's dream. You might as well be dead. <laughs> Mess methods. The the influx of blood. 
from less desired peoples will cause populations to rapidly become darker in pigmentation, smaller in stature, more given to crimes of <laughs> larceny, kidnapping, assault, murder, rape, and sexual immorality, and the ratio of insanity in the population will rapidly increase. Therefore, we must strive to raise the human race to the highest plane of social organization by ridding the world of genetic mutation. <laughs> it is the curse of greatness that we must step over the bodies of the dead to create new life. And yet, we must create new life. We must cleanse the soil or it will never bear fruit. It would be an evil day if the Germanic people did not survive. It would be the end of beauty and culture and the creative power of this earth. Now, let us remember our Fuhrer and salute our Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler, who has created the Third Reich and will lead us into the future. Sieg Heil! Sieg Heil! Sieg Heil! Judy Fantasy. Except, no, the word you were really thinking was Jew. You think the doll is a Jewess. You think it is acceptable to be intimate with a Jew if you can hide her identity. But you are not so creative that I cannot see through your ploy. Do you understand that the penalty for an SS officer having relations with a Jew is death? But you do not love this Jew. You hate her with all of your passion. You beat her and brutalize her and break her. You treat her like vermin. She takes all of your anger and abuse and hatred. She is something to be obliterated. I will kill this filthy Jew bitch. I will destroy her. What do you think of these developments, Rank? I'm appalled. This is the soldier Germany needs. Driven by blind passion, eager to destroy our enemies, ready and willing to wipe lesser races from the face of the earth. He will bring us the future. I have inspired this. Germany will not succeed unless we can control our people in totality to the deepest core of their being, their desires, their fantasies, their thoughts. It's easier to break the Russian front than to conquer a man's heart. Good work, Rink. 
Thank you, Herr Hemmler. Hmm. There is but one more advancement we must make before we achieve protection. It is fine for our soldiers to hate our enemies, but we must also instill in them a love of the homeland, German pride and virtue. They must see the future in her eyes and be inspired to attain our noble ideals. Through these dolls, they must love, well, themselves. Themselves. They must find themselves superior to others and long to conquer the world. Can you do that, Brink? With a doll. <laughs> Don't you understand the power you wield? You are tapping into their primal desires, the sacred heart, and you are telling them this is what you want. This is what you dream. This is your purpose in life. You, Brink, are in command. I don't want that kind of power. Every good German wants that kind of power. It's what drives our conquest. I don't think I can give you that. I am surprised <coughs> of that science with such a limited imagination. You will find a way, I assure you. Hello. <laughs> I'm Dr. Rink. Oh, uh, you can call me Arthur. I, I made you. sure how to how to do this <laughs>
I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> not real. Why aren't you real? You don't have the answers? Oh, uh, I, I, I... So you do think she's pretty? <clears throat> Who? Her. No, it's not a real person. If she were. It's not. If she were real. But, it, but it's not. I'm just if you no, 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 look, it's true. not a lie. So I there's no point in... she's not a liar. No one believes it is. I don't understand you. Sometimes... A fantasy can be comforting. <laughs> How can someone find comfort in the company of an imaginary person? Because an imaginary person can be anything you want it to be. I'd want it to be real. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Real women are intimidating. Remember, you said so. uh, uh, That's different. How? You can't just uh, imagine reality away. You have to deal with it. Dreams <laughs> are the only way we have left to deal with reality. Uh, dreams aren't real. An imaginary person can't do anything. An imaginary person does everything. Everything you want it to do and nothing you don't. <clears throat> An imaginary person would, would never belittle you or make fun of you or call you names. An imaginary person would never wish you were someone else or be ashamed of you. And an imaginary person would never call you ugly. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, uh, it was very unprofessional of me, so let's just get back to work. Uh, but, uh, Please. Someone told you that you're ugly? I think we have to go about this um, research differently. You're, you're, you're not. It doesn't matter. It does. Since we're no longer function, uh, focusing on the um, exterior, you're, you're pretty. I think we should focus more on the function. You are. You're, you're uh, very pretty. Perhaps. I, I thought so that the first time that you walked in. Yeah. 
down. I'll help. Push, push, darling, push for the glory of your life. We have created a new Aryan life. are more valuable than the others because our blood enables us to invent more, to lead our people better. We must have another child immediately, Hester. Yes, my love, to the right. She's dead! My love is dead! You fool, she was never real to begin with. This is real. <laughs> this is the future. This is what we're fighting for. Now go, man the guns, defend the city, and give your life for Germany! <coughs> that was an order, soldier. Air right straight up! Air right alerts! Blackout conditions! Blackout conditions! absolute and global, with one grand destiny, to occasion the supremacy of the Caucasian. In the Norseman's superior breeding, humanity's future is nobly enshrined. Our fair people will provide the seedlings for a master race to rule mankind that's shrewder, heartier, able to thrive better than any human being now alive. We're creating a new world order for our Aryan brothers and sisters. We're expanding our nation's borders and tipping the scales on which Europe centers. Soon, we'll roll over Asia like a flood until Germany reigns over all of us. <laughs> with our pure Nordic blood. <laughs> 